Aloha and welcome to Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday at 2 o'clock from 2 to 2.30 on thinktechhawaii.com. We highlight positive stories uh, in Hawaii of companies and individuals that have accomplished, I guess, a lot, depending upon uh, the different negative stories that you hear, but they've, uh, they've overcome the obstacles, they are successful despite the challenges, and they share some of their secrets on how they've done that. And we have a, a lot of good stories to share, and we have for the past year. Uh, today, I've got Dennis Wong, who's a senior vice president over at Hawaii National Bank, and we have Guy Akasaki, who is the owner of commercial roofing and waterproofing in Hawaii. Uh, both of them have success stories to share with us today, uh, but we're going to probably hear a little bit more from Guy this time because we've had Dennis on the show before. So welcome, Dennis, Guy. I'm glad you can make it today. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Rich. All right, why don't we uh, just start the show off a little bit. Um, Dennis, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and Hawaii National Bank, and you are the one that really wanted to bring Guy onto the show and, and highlight his accomplishments. So, you know, what's, what's the relationship there? Well, this is my second appearance, and thank you for having me on the show. I'm always a pleasure and enjoy it because I have a passion and care for the people for, of Hawaii and also to assist uh, business owners with their success stories. Um, I'm Dennis Wong. From, uh, I work at Hawaii National Bank. I'm the senior vice president. So I basically oversee all the branches on the island of Oahu. We have a niche that uh, caters to the locally owned, closely held businesses in Hawaii. And the businesses will uh, consist of all different type of industries, anywhere from manufacturing down to retail. So uh, in my 39 years of banking and the privilege of working with many businesses throughout the years, I've come across a very special friend and a client of mine, and I wanted to share his success story, which I thought was very unique and encouraging and uplifting to everybody, and that's Guy Akasaki from Commercial Roofing and Waterproofing Hawaii. Very good. Well, that's uh, a lot to live up to there, Guy. I mean, mm -hmm. It's amazing what $22.50 will uh, pay you after. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a Starbucks cup of coffee, I think. <laughs> but Guy, welcome to the show. I'm glad you could make it. Uh, can you give us a little background on yourself? Uh, just tell us where you, where you grew up, what you've done, and how you did. Actually, I was a military brat. Uh, age six, my dad got drafted into the, um, the military. <clears throat> well, actually, that drafted, he got put in there. Uh -huh. He used to be one of the stewards, like, so to speak, for the plantation. Mm. So they got him drafted to get the troublemaker out. Uh -oh. So I hands from age six all the way we lived in Washington State, California, Texas, Okinawa, Germany, oh, that's, that's Massachusetts. That's good, good experience to travel like mm -hmm. that. And then went to high school in Okinawa. Uh, and that's basically where I came before I came here to Hawaii. Supposedly to go to school, but, but uh, <laughs> my major was surfing. Uh -huh. And after six years of college, my dad said, you're going to have to learn. <laughs> and then one day, <clears throat> that one day when it was time for that check to come, it never came. I'm going, oh, no, I've got to go away. <laughs> yeah. what, a, what a awakening. Yeah. Well, a rude awakening. Mm -hmm. But so from what I understand, you're still working on that surfing degree, right? You're still uh, surfing every day? Yeah. Or? You know, when you're young, you're all guts, no brains. But as you get older, you have Warm all guts. brains and no guts. Oh, okay. <laughs> so well, it's more fun, you know. <laughs> good. My, I wish I had less of a gut, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So, now, okay, so right out of school, how did you uh, get into what you're doing now? Well, actually, from junior high school into college, my aspiration, my inspiration was Frank Lloyd Wright. So I'm a failed architect. Uh -huh. I'm a failed architect, if you could say that. And going through college, you know, I guess being young and impetuous, you start to think about school in college and I had friends that I graduated and they were draftsmen. I'm going, mm. I gotta do that after I graduate? So I got young and impetuous and I got out. I dropped out, went to work for the hotels, got into hotel management. Then I realized that is tough. Visitor then I industry, figured, yeah, that's seven yeah. days a week. And at that time, my girlfriend, now my wife, uh, was working for a roofing contractor and he was having a tough time getting his company going. So she had asked me, he says, you know, my boss is actually looking for someone to kind of help him with his construction company. And I said, sure, what kind of construction company? Roofing. Oh, that's beneath me. A roofer? 
I'm an architect. <laughs> but hence, after a period of time, um, yeah, I went to go and help him out. And then I found a lot of the skill sets that I had applied. Mm. And it was from that point like on. Like what? Yeah. Uh, share what some of those skill sets might be that would apply. You know, a lot of it had to do with architecture and construction in generality from reading plans to understanding right. construction. So you yeah. knew the industry, you knew the business, and you knew how to read some of the, the, the paperwork that was involved. Yeah, yeah, but it was, um, you know, the uh, seasonality of experience mm -hmm. and age and immaturity, that was my portion. <laughs> <laughs> the dumb side of life that we think when we're young, we know. And it was a, it was a season for me to learn. Good, and you did well. <clears throat> Yeah, I was really uh, fortunate. I was really fortunate to be able to do that. So for about 12 years, you know, we, we continued to um, continue to work. Um, for the first three to five years was a learning experience. And there came, there came a time in that period of time that I thought, geez, you know, I can do this better myself. And so there was a, there was a tugging on the inside mm -hmm. where I thought, you know what, <clears throat> I could do it myself. And there was a small, still voice on the inside that says, you know what, I think you need to stay. And uh, even though everything within me cried out that you can do it, you could do it, you can make it, there's something about commitment, integrity, and honesty, and giving the opportunity that made me stay for about close to 12 years. And in wow. 1993, when the economy tanked, I really had no intention on leaving. And um, as I came on, the owner wanted to go ahead and sell the business and do any, you know, basically sell it to the employees. So we spent about a year and a half with uh, legal, you know, attorneys drafting things Doing for transition an ESOP, yeah. and ESOP. Yeah, <clears throat> and in that transition, as we moved through in the 11th hour, as the principal at that time saw the excitement of everybody, even though the economy was tanking, that was around mm -hmm. the Iniki time, um, he decided not to sell. Really? And even so what everybody it did, was excited about yeah. it, huh? So as we transitioned, that was pretty much the point of departure, wow. where there was a difference of intent and direction. That's sad. And that really kind of embarked me to kind of, I was going to be a franchise owner for a subway. But, um, you well, know, that would have been a switch. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> but I think it was the wisdom of a wife that said, God, you can't even make a sandwich at home. What did you think you're going to do with a franchise? <laughs> <laughs> So hence, you know, following that, we had actually opportunities. I had made a commitment to the prior owner that even if I did go out and I planned to do this, or if I even got back into the construction industry or the roofing industry, I made a verbal commitment. I had no employment contract. I made a verbal commitment, maybe young, dumb, mm. idiot. I made a commitment to verbally not compete with him for one year at a time the economy was bad. Mm. And so hence, you know, we got into, I said, got into uh, just minor repairs and I would not touch any of the clientele because 12 to 13 wow. years is a big network. Well, and that must have been a long year. It was a very long year. But in that period of time, in the first month, somebody, um, one of the largest roofing, I mean, construction companies offered me a big project off island. This was the Westin. When it got hit by Iniki, it was a big job. Yeah. And he said, nobody knows this better than you. So we'd like you to do it. And I went... I can't take it. I'd love to. They were going to fund it. They were going to cash it. They were going to support everything. All I had to do was engineer it. You know, those ethics just <clears throat> get in the way all the time, don't they? Big time, big time. So I'd gone away. They were really upset. Then three weeks later, someone else called me. When people were making money, you know, at Westlock, they were flipping houses. Mm -hmm. One person, a gentleman, a contractor offered me. He had 250 grand in a bank. He says, it's yours. You set it up. You set it up the way you want it, what size company? I said, eh, about $2 million contracting company. And he goes, do it. You set up how you want to do it. Quite excited, but in the end, a small steel voice again basically told me, he says, um, this guy is all about money. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you borrow the money, you have to make sure that you repay it and you follow through with what yeah. he gave to you. So how can you allow your purpose and destiny to be fulfilled if you go this path? <clears throat> so he too, I had to tell him, I said, you know, I'm just going to start really small. I don't know what I'm going to do, probably a franchise. <clears throat> and it didn't. Then I embarked on a very small like, roof repair business, thinking that the big stuff is just crazy because we became the largest at the time prior. And as we did, I thought, you know what, <clears throat> I did that was right. I, I, I told the owner I would not compete. I had these opportunities come to me and I did not take them because of my integrity and commitment and honesty. Mm -hmm. And for the next six months, I suck rocks. I would imagine. It was very that tough. Was tough. <clears throat> yeah. It was very tough. 
you know, to the point that I remember working out of my office in Kalama Valley, a little eight by eight office. I had a business plan, and this is where Dennis came into the picture. I showed him the business plan that I started it eight months earlier. And he says, Guy, this is the worst time to get into business, especially construction. I said, no, no, I can do it. And he goes, you should just do business plans. <laughs> and I remember sitting in my office close to eight months later, looking at it at 11 o'clock at night, going into one o'clock in the morning. And I said, this is supposed to work. Why is it not working? Mm. And I remember taking that book, <clears throat> so frustrated because I had helped a couple of other residential contractors get started in doing well. I took that book and I slammed it against the wall. Mm. And I cried. I said, why? And then all I could see, the picture of Dennis going, I told you so. <laughs> and hence, in the morning when I got up, I was down in a fetal position on the floor, papers all over the place. My wife was like, what happened here? A tsunami came through. And there were some things that internally I really had to kind of wrestle with and came to peace with. And as I got up in the morning, we began to do the things that I needed to do. And it was just amazing at the end of the year, the first year, where we were 30% down, we had hit. It was just amazing. It was, uh, it's one of those experiences that you never want to go through. Well, no, of course not. That sounds horrible. But mm -hmm. what, what were those things that you did differently to turn things around? Uh, one of those things that I did to make it turn around, I think it really, it really is the point. I'm a, I'm a what, do you, what do you call a self-starter. I'm, I know how to get things started. I know how to frame it. I know the, the pieces that have to have. I know the, the financial aspects. But for me, it was just really being able to release it to the guy upstairs. Mm -hmm. To know that, you know what, it's in his hands. It's not labeled him, but it was him. It was God that really kind of gave me the opportunity. And what I was going through wasn't so much um, everything was going wrong. There were things that just happened, and I had to be able to trust them. And when I began to realize that I needed to trust him, things started to happen. And in that last quarter, close to about $600,000 revenue to come in in the last quarter of the year when holiday season, mm. economy was on, it was virtually an impossibility out of a network <coughs> of people that I knew all over this island, and not one of them were new. I mean, not one of them were old, they were all new. It's an amazing feat in itself. Very interesting. Well, we're going to have to take a short break. Believe it or not, we've already gone through the first segment. We're going to be going into the second segment here shortly. Uh, and Dennis, we might want to get your take on some of this and how you were there to work with Guy to, to help him put this uh, company in motion. Great. So, I'm excited. All right. Very good. But this is uh, Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. I'm here with Dennis Wong and Guy Akasaki. Uh, and we were talking about how he was able to build a commercial roofing company uh, in Hawaii in one of the more challenging times uh, in the economy. We'll be right back. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association. And our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, 25 talk shows by 25 dedicated hosts every week, helping us explore and understand the issues and events in and affecting our state. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Aloha, how you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gardo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Aloha. Good to, have good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Uh, we've got Dennis Wong here from Hawaii National Bank, who, who his last appearance was about a year ago, and he's coming back for an encore presentation. And then we've got Guy Akasaki with Commercial Roofing, who's going to be sharing uh, his success, uh, I guess, uh, secrets, because he he's has a company that was in very humble beginnings, and, and now it's uh, one of the top businesses in the country. And I'm talking about the United States. So we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but Dennis, I guess you were you were with Guy during some of this uh, these challenging times. Um, what role did Hawaii National Bank play in uh, in helping Guy uh, get his company focused in the right direction? Let me back up a little bit and give you a little preview. And Hawaii National Bank um, 
it's a, we work closely with our customers. The Dynamics is more like a private banker. Mm -hmm. So the old cliche is know your borrower, know your customer, and that's our job and that's what we did. So uh, knowing Guy with the previous company that he operated and he had left that and there was a time that passed until he was able to start his new company. And of course, there was a struggle as he, Guy mentioned previously and then when he was ready to go, we had a background of him for about at least four or five years that we knew directly dealing with him. And knew the, the character of the person. Yes. And we knew what his expert, his expertise was, his character, and that knowledge, character, commitment, commitment and follow through. I think that's the secret what Guy showed. So it showed us enough where when he brought us his brought us his business plan. Uh, contractors, because they have to upfront a lot of the costs when they do constructions, and typically what they require and what we offer is working capital, where it's the timing differences between having to pay bills versus the collecting uh, receivables for jobs that they've done and completed. So with this, without the line of credit, it would be impossible because they would have they wouldn't right. have the capital to perform their jobs. So we brought our think tank together, our brains together, we worked co collaboratively together, and we were able to um, offer him a credit facility that grew and grew as his company grew as well. And his company was well managed, and it gave us the opportunity to finance him. And we're quite uh, proud of that and very happy because one of the th most rewarding parts of my job as a banker is helping people start off their business and seeing them become successful and then sharing the stories of the success to others because um, it, it, there's a lot of success stories out there, Reggie. Reg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are, and, and we've got probably one of the better success stories right here with us today. So, um, Guy, I guess, uh, you know, you know, Dennis is sharing. I mean, I guess he was, he's almost like a partner. You guys worked very closely together uh, over the years, haven't you? Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I think um, they've been a tremendous support. And actually, actually Dennis is a personal friend, but professional friend at that. Even though I told him that roofing contractors are Honolulu's finest crooks, liars, and <laughs> thieves. <laughs> so he still believed in me, <laughs> surprisingly. <laughs> But well, I think um, that really had a lot to do with it, and um, they gave us a lot of support. As we kind of moved into it, I think one of the key elements, especially in starting a business, is really kind of knowing what your core values are. Mm -hmm. And for ourselves, the core values is that in, it's an intangible framework that sets the tapestry of who you are that allows you to be able to, to push through what you need to push through. And for us, it was being a unified team of professionals, taking our experience and talent to be on the cutting edge of the technology of the industry that we're in, and in the end, exceed the client's expectation. It's a few sentences that it doesn't matter when you apply it to HR, or you apply it to anything, it has its application. And it's worked very well for you. It I has. Mean, you put this uh, organization together with these core values. Yes. Uh, and it's taken you to some pretty high levels. Yes. Can you, can you just share with us just, you know, briefly, and I don't want to embarrass you, but with some of these accolades and awards you've been winning over the last few years, I mean, you've, you've done a hell of a job. Well, we've actually, since its inception in 93, we've actually formed six different other entities. Um, in many of the entities, as well as commercial roofing, we've won Pacific Business News Fastest 50. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually just recently won the Commercial Roofing Contractor of the Year, and this was um, a designation nationwide. Right, that's the entire United States. That was United not Hawaii, States. that was the yeah. whole United States. That's amazing. I thought it was a scam, but it was actually for real. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we found Pacific Business News is Business Leadership Hawaii. So we actually were nominated, uh, and then we got thrown in with uh, Watts Construction and these big companies, and I thought, I don't think we're going to, at least we're in good company. And it was amazing, you know, the interview, the information was provided, 
and they chose us. Wow. So we we're so honored to, to have that designation. See, that's, that's another example, and I, I try to establish this theme a little bit, but, you know, we do have some amazing success stories in Hawaii, mm -hmm. um, and in a lot of times, in a lot of ways, we're able to compete at a national level with, with anybody out there. I mean, we, Absolutely. we've yes. got some good people here with some good skills, and, mm -hmm. um, and we've got a lot to be proud of. Absolutely. I think a lot of times in Hawaii, we always have this thing that we're island mentality. But if we think about it, we're really the stepping stone to the emerging countries and to the global community at that. And that's powerful when you can connect the dots. You know? It is. You know, and you've got so many different experiences just talking with you. I mean, you've got experiences all over the world, all over the country. You've brought all these skills together that you've accumulated over the years. Uh, and it's all come together to create <clears throat> what you're doing now. Right. You know, and this is, uh, I think there's examples of this all over, you know, Hawaii. And I think w if I can add that what Guy did correctly and he had the foresight to do is form a management team that was made up of uh, good support people that could uh, provide strength to all the areas that he needs because your business has to be balanced. You can't be uh, off kiltered one side or the other and how do you balance that is what Guy has done is form a good uh, advisory team he's um, connected himself with the bank myself as well as an insurance agent as well as a, a CPA and it's very important as you know Reggie as a CPA or accountant it's critical to have good peak, uh, bookkeeping report uh, book, bookkeeping reporting and then also he has um, his marketing team so there was a balance when he went in there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know to your point not to <coughs> belabor it but having those to being able to monitor and evaluate performance against standards or against targets uh, that crosses all uh, sectors of the company every one of the different areas of the company. It doesn't have to be accounting related. It just it needs to be production related or, or compliance related in some areas. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got to be able to monitor and, and watch that. And so having a very sophisticated internal monitoring system, um, which is probably just as much IT as it is anything else, uh, is pretty important to any mm -hmm. company. Would you agree with that, guy? Oh yeah, absolutely. The systemic controls and having a good grasp on that is, is so important. Um, the other thing that I see in, in the formation of the entities is really be aware of your surroundings and your environment. <clears throat> you know, we started as a roofing company. And again, Hawaii is a very labor-driven market. Yeah. And you have a lot of contractors that are signatory. And people, because you do a good job, they, they want you to do the work, but you cannot cross lines. <clears throat> so we actually formed another roofing company that was union. Mm. And we're able to do that. We've done the likes of Bloomingdale's, I mean, a lot of big projects. <clears throat> um, as we did that, we got into the 8A program. And that allowed us as Oriental Asian to be able to participate in that type of work. What are you, for the <coughs> members of the viewing audience who doesn't know what an 8A program is, can you explain that real quick? It's a set-aside uh, program that's put out by the federal government, or SBA, to allow minorities to be able to do business with the federal government. So using that priority. Program, priority, correct. So as a result of that, we started a company, which is Allied Pacific Builders, and we did set-aside work, building renovations for the military. And that then, could be big. Yeah, so it, got, it took us into areas, Hawaii also into one. That helped us as well, too, because at Hawaii National Bank, as a preferred lender, and we can approve mm -hmm. SBA loans, that we're able to go and offer a uh, very specific product for that specific need to help the contractor through the 8A contracts. Right, and that's and that's important because I think the uh, the SBA has got a lot of different types of programs. It could be very helpful. Yes. For small businesses of all kinds, mm -hmm. uh, and with Hawaii National Bank, with your involvement with the SBA and your knowledge of all the different products, you could be instrumental in helping do a little matchmaking and figure out what makes the most sense. Yes, um, the SBA offers. Uh, first of all, if somebody was interested in an SBA loan, they wouldn't go to SBA, they would come directly to the bank. And so through the SBA products, the bank might be able to offer terms or interest rates that would be a little bit more flexible or generous, 
outside of the uh, standard underwriting for banks. You know, I, um, in full disclosure, I'm a national board of directors for the SBA. I'm chair of the ninth region for regulatory fairness. Um, and as such, I get on a lot of newsletters. Almost mm -hmm. every district office in the Western United States sends uh -huh. me stuff. And I can tell you, there's, I would say, a couple hundred programs a week that's available. And some of them are online. You know, so there's a tremendous resource there. Uh, we've got a, a few minutes before we have to wrap up. And I'm wondering, Guy, if, if you were to leave the audience with any final thought or words of wisdom, what do you think they might be? Boy, there's a ton and not enough time in the world to share. <clears throat> no pressure, no pressure, just 30 seconds. I would probably say, you know, if you look at starting a business, know where you want to be. But more than anything else, at the end of the day, whatever you feel that you desire, your passion, the focus that you want to get into, know that honesty, integrity, and commitment be the tapestry of that structure. Because if that's, the rest you can learn. Right? That's right. Well, the some of that learn. is built into the DNA. You've got to... It's in the very that. tapestry of who you are, yeah. right? That's so, so critical. And the other part, know your numbers. There you go. Know your accounting. Yeah. You know, as you had said, Rich. Know your balance sheet, your income statement. Know how things fit together. Because at the end of the day, this is the way the world operates. And if you're watching it closely, you'll see that nail stick up, and you know there's a problem there. you got to go look at it. Absolutely. Dennis, you have any final words of wisdom you'd like to share with the audience? Yes. Um, I would encourage any business owner or operator to have a close relationship with his or her banker. And um, uh, the banks actually prefer getting to know a person so we're very open we have money to lend uh, one of the things is keeping proper financial records and timely financial records I say this um, truly because it's in order for the banker to assist them we must have proper record uh, financial reporting very good well you know I appreciate you both being here today um, maybe the next time you win another award, you can come back on and, and <laughs> tell us all about it. Yeah. You know? uh, and Dennis, it's always a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having uh, me. But this is uh, Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock. Uh, and we highlight success stories in Hawaii. Hoping to see you next week. Until then, aloha.